All right, in this lesson, we are going to go through a few things. We're going to go through Euler's formula. You might call it Ula. I say tomato, you say tomato, but Euler's formula. And it's a really straightforward thing. What do you think V stands for, Matt Thomas? Um, v, so that would be the number of vertices. Uh, vertices, okay. Now, and E, what do you think that stands for, Mr. Peng? Edges. Okay, so we've got V for vertices, for vertices, and we've got uh, we've got E for edges, and a lot of the time you might be asked to verify Euler's or Euler's, whatever you want to call it, formula. Now, the the tricky part is this F here is the faces, but to be honest, a lot of the time you don't actually have to work that out because you actually will be given a network and you have to work out how many faces it has. Let me just explain what a face is. Can, first of all, over here, how many vertices do we have? We've got one, two, three, four, five, ed, five vertices. Okay, so we've got five vertices, and of course you can see that that's, that's also here. This is my graph. Now from there, we've got how many edges? Well, you would just go ahead and count them. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven. Is, is it seven correct? Yeah. It should be correct because it's there anyway. All right. And then what we can do is... Now, I'm going to tell you that it has four faces. This network has four faces. But I'm going to show you that we can, we can work out the faces using Euler's formula. So Euler's formula is this thingy here. V minus E plus F equals two. And it's probably the only thing you need a calculator for. But if you can't you work that out a simple thing like that without a calculator, then you're probably struggling a little bit. You probably shouldn't even be doing maths at all. <laughs> okay. It's rough, but it's true. Okay. Now, let's do it. Let's do it in our head. Okay. We've got V minus E. So we've got 5 minus 7. And then we've got plus our faces is equal to 2. Now, 5 minus 7 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus F is equal to 2. Now, what I would then have to do is add 2 to both sides to get F by itself. And then F is equal to 4. So there are four faces to this network. Now, what is a face? A face is when we have... Now, it says here, you'll have discovered that there was a connection between the vertices, edges and faces of a connected planar... Graph, planar. That's why we've actually learnt this whole planar business. Remember that a graph which is planar, there is no, there is no crosses. Can you see, like this, is this graph planar? No, it's not, or network planar. But of course, if I was to, if I was to rub one of these, these out and leave this one here, then this network, which is isomorphic, is now planar, okay? So that's why we actually dealt with this whole uh, word planar to begin with. So this network is actually more about shading. Now you can see here that this shaded region is one face. This shaded region here, well, that's, that won't work. That really won't work. That shaded region there, if I have green and purple, that's going to give me pretty much black, isn't it? <laughs> that's two faces. Then over here... That's going to give me a third face. And where's the other face? The outside. the outside. You've got to always remember the outside's a face. There's always going to be at least two faces, you would think. For You would think. You would think. Well, maybe not. Is this a, what about how many faces for this? How many faces for this network here? How many faces for this network? One. Well, let's have a look at the edges. How many edges are, have we got? Two edges, so we've got, and how many vertices? Two vertices. Two. So we've got V minus E, which is two minus two, plus F. Uh, one edge, that's correct. So two mi is it two minus one, plus F is equal to two. So I've got um, one plus F is equal to two. How many faces do we have? No. No, you are One plus one is equal to two. Can you see here that the, the only face for this network that we've drawn here is the outside? Does that make sense? Oh, that's a trick question. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now, 
Now, what we're going to do now is you must remember that the outside of the graph is counted as one face, as we just said. Now, of course, this is the stuff we're looking at it from 10C, and we sort of skipped it a little bit and had a look at D and E. But I'm going to pause this video now, and I'd like you to redraw both of these graphs. I'd like you to make them planar, because that's the only way Euler's, form Euler's formula applies. And then from there, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to work out and pr or pr verify Euler's formula and, in other words, how many f work out how many faces there are. Okay, so I'm going to pause it now, have a go at that. Alright, so just quickly, uh, you should have had a go at this. Now I'm going to unpause my little uh, projector thing here and, and hopefully, uh, voila, this is basically what we're talking about when proving Euler's, Euler's formula. You label the vertices or, or find how many vertices you've got, six, um, how many edges? Well, I've counted the edges myself, which is nine. Uh, faces. I've, you can see there that I've listed each face. Now, don't forget the outside. So you can see over here that the outside face for this one is number five, and the outside face for this one is number six. So what we're talking about, this is a standard exam question, even in year 12 exams, okay? You know, and it's, they'll say verify, but you need to actually prove it. So what you've, what you've done is, is I've written down what V, E and F are, and you can see there on the left hand side that V, 6 minus 9 plus 5 is equal to 2, and I've written as rec, or as required. Whenever you're trying to show something or verify something, that's sort of how I would do it. Uh, particularly if you were doing methods or, or further. Same thing over on the right hand side, we've got four, only the four vertices, but this time we've actually got eight edges We've got six faces which I've labelled up there, and V minus E plus F uh, is 4 minus 8 plus 6, which is equal to 2. We've verified Euler's formula. Remember, however, that it's own, by, by me doing these little red lines here, that's, we've made, made it planar. Euler's formula only works for planar graphs, and that's of course why we learnt the, the whole planar concept in the first place. Okay, so in order to get rid of those, I actually did some loops, these things, okay, and, um, and that's sort of, yeah, okay with that? Am I happy to move on? Are you happy yes. if I move on? Oh. Yeah, um, you had a question, just one sec, did you want to um, ask a question on? Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to have a look at re traversable networks. And traversable, we've, we've already discussed this actually, we've already discussed this in quite a, in a fair bit of detail because we looked at the Connersberg problem and we looked at the, the Connersberg problem from Germany was, was a network that we couldn't traverse, it, it was not, not traversable. A network is traversable if you can cross every edge only once and there's actually, we actually get into some rules about vertices and how many edges and, and things such as that. A traversable network must must be connected. So there's no. How can you possibly go through every every vertice if it's not connected? So that's quite obvious. Now, what I'd like, I could ask you to check whether these are traversable, but I'm going to sort of. There are exact now. The traversable networks are only traversable based on this, and I've already explained this to you. If all vertices are of an even degree, or there are exactly two vertices of an odd degree. Now, I'm going to pause this video. I'd like you to get these networks and I'd like you to put a circle around each of them. So for example, for example, for this first one over here, we know that this has a degree three. Okay, and, over, and keep doing that. I'll get you to do that for all three of these networks. And then of course, we're going to de decide which of them are traversable. Okay, so, First of all, go ahead and do that. I'm going to pause this, uh, pause this, and give you a go at that now. And I'm just going to zoom in. Oops, that's probably a bit too much. Let's let's have it like that. All caption. All right. So I, look, I hope you've had a little bit of a go at that. And um, if I go ahead and press play now, you should see there that what I've done is I've labelled each of these networks. Now you can see here that uh, we've, on the one on the left hand side, we've got, we've got six vertices, we've got six vertices. Doesn't really matter how many vertices we have, two are odd. So is it traversable? Yeah. Yes it is, it's traversable. <laughs> now, 
Now, th what you'll later on sort of find is, is it traversable, like, if we go around, I guess if we, it's traversable in a number of ways, I think. But when we get to Euler paths and circuits, that's when it gets a little bit different. We need to start and finish at an odd vertice, for example. So let's let's go ahead and find out what a, or what it, what it means by being traversable. If I go wee wee, oh, I stop there. Is that going to work? No. Okay, because then I go there and I that's not traversable. So 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 how is it traversable? What, what do I do? Start at the odd. Uh -huh, I start at the odd. So where, what do I do? I go over here. One, yeah. two, three, yeah. four, yeah. five, yeah. six. <gasps> I start at one. I would finish in another odd. So there's, there's, there is that, uh, that thing. And, and we're, we're sort of going to get into what exactly that is. Now, what does Euler start with? E. So that's actually what we call, that's what we call an Euler path. In other words, it actually contains every edge. Only once. That's what we call an Euler path. Now think about, now this is the, the, the tricky thing. Euler starts with E. E for edge. That's what we call an Euler path when we get to, to, when we get to that. An Euler circuit is a place that... An Euler circuit is when we actually start and finish at the same place. Think about the Grand Prix circuit. You certainly don't start and like when you where, wherever you start, you finish. Yeah. So think about the word circuit as you know a circuit. I've just done, I've just done a circuit. Okay. If I start if I start here, and I and I go this way, room, and then I finish over there, room. There you go. I'm finishing, starting and finishing at the same spot. Yes. What? It's still finishing. This, this is still yeah. So that's an Euler. That's an Euler path. Is there a way in which this could be an Euler circuit? I don't think so. We're going to get to that later. Now, what about the part? What about number two? Is that going to be traversable? Yeah. Sure, is. sure is, and we can do it. I'm not going to really. I'm going to go wee wee woo. There you go. Now, is that an Euler path or an Euler circuit? It's an Euler circuit because we start and finish at the same place. Is that right? Yes. Pretty straightforward stuff. Now, what about on the right? How many odd vertices do I have? Four. Four. Does that mean that is there is there is it traversable? No. No, it's not. However, what's interesting about this? I'm going to just pause this for a sec. Okay. Okay. So. We've just had a little discussion, and Cam, can you just tell me how I could make, we've just discussed that the one on the right is not traversable, and as it turns out, there's no Euler's path or circuit. How can we make this one uh, traversable? Um, you can put in another edge yep. that goes between the two odds. Good, and it doesn't really matter which two odds is there, because there's, there's four odds. So what we can do is we can just go, wee. there you go. So therefore, this 5 becomes a 6. Do you agree with that? And then this 3 becomes a 4. And then how many odd vertices do we have? We have two odd vertices. So therefore, there are exactly two odd vertices. It is traversable. Now, I'm not going to bother going through that network and showing you why it's traversable. You can go ahead and do that in your own time. Now... All right, the last thing I'm going to cover, in it, and I've already covered it sort of partly anyway, is we've got Euler paths and circuits. As we discussed, a circuit starts and finishes at the same spot. A path is, of course, when you can start and finish at a different spot. Now, remember that it's going, an Euler path includes every edge just once. And just think about it, every edge, edge for E, okay? Euler edge. A Euler circuit is an Euler path that just starts and finishes at the same vertex. We've been through this. How do we know that we have an Euler's path or a circuit? Well, an Euler's an Euler path exists when an Euler circuit only exists in the case where all the vertices are even. Okay, they have to be even. 
Euler's, so for example, let's have a look over here. One, two, three. So this has a degree three. This one has a degree two. This one has a degree four. This one has a degree two. This one has a degree three. Okay. Now we can see there that there's two. There's two odd vertices. So I could go like this. Um, oh, let's say. Let's say here. I can go like this. Mm, how are we going to do it? Like, let's go there. 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 Let's go there and there. What's what have we just done? Uh, That's an Euler, Euler path. Path. Oh, path. Does that mean it doesn't come back to start? That's exactly right. Now, what about this one? Let's have a look. We've got, let's have a look. We've got two. We've got two. One, two, three, four. Four. We've got two. What can you tell me about all of those vertices? They are all even. So it, Euler's circuit will exist. Now, I could go ahead. Now, remember that you have to cover every edge. We then get into a, what's called a Hamiltonian path where we have to cover every vertice. But because we've got to cover every edge, so this postman has to go up every street, but this postman has to start and finish at the same place. Now, as it turns out, this postman could do it a number of ways, but a lot of the time, so let's have a look. Let's go, let's go to, let's say postman starts at D, and, and D is for Dodgeville, okay? He goes from Dodgeville, he goes to, I don't know, Eaglemont. He goes to Craigieburn, then he goes to... Alfington, then he goes to Brunswick, then he goes back to Craigieburn, and then guess what? He's finished at Dodgeville. There you go. What's this? It's an Euler's Thank you. And you can see, and of course, shh, I know that it's uh, some points to remember. Euler circuits will only be possible in a connected graph where all vertices have an even degree. Didn't we just discuss that? Euler's paths, Euler paths will only be possible in a connected graph starting at vertex A and ending at vertex B when they are only odd vertices. Are we okay with that? Sure. There you go, that's 10A to E. Now I'm not going to, should I go through Hamilton's? I don't think so, I think I should probably stop there. But are you, is, that, is that okay? Are there any questions before we, before we, yeah there's about 10 minutes. Alright, no questions? Alright, well thank you for your attention and we'll stop it there.